Welcome back to my channel, scribes. You already know that I've done a video called Mastering Genre, but today I wanna to talk to you about four very important things to think about when you choose and when you research your genre. Now, when I say research, I mean, yes, you're gonna to have to put some time and effort into actually making sure you're in the right genre for whatever you're writing. In screenwriting, you're going to visually see a lot of elements that have to do with genre. I'm gonna explain about that in this video today. Welcome back to my channel, Scribes. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. Don't be shy, take a look around. My channel's aimed at creating videos for writers who wanna create the perfect writing foundation out of hard work, the knowledge that I give you, and of course, having the right mindset. Now, as I talked about a little bit earlier, I wanna to talk to you about researching genre and the things that you should be heavily taking into consideration when you're going ahead and preparing to write a new script or of course a new novel. Now this is a step I feel like a lot of writers tend to skip over. We're pretty well versed in what genre is. We understand a lot about it and because of that, we pretty much tend to already stick our next piece of writing into this pre-planned genre without even really taking a deep dive into if it is going to fall into this category. Like I mentioned before, there are four major things that I want you to consider when you're researching your genre, and I highly suggest you do this before you start to write, right when you get to that idea stage. Once you get into that stage, this will help you absolutely plan out all of your situations and help for a smoother transition when you're outlining. Yes, researching genre can help that much. So here's the first thing you're gonna to wanna to research. Year and time period. Depending on what genre you're actually writing, you're gonna to wanna to figure out what year and what time period you're gonna be setting your whole film or story in. And that's because, partially, half of the things that you're going to wanna to set that time period in is going to apply to what sort of props and what sort of situations you put your characters in. So if you're writing a historical piece, for the most part, you're not going to have your traditional average dating and courting scenarios happening. So you're gonna to wanna to actually research that time period and how this was structured within their actual society. Similarly, if you're writing something like The Great, you're gonna to wanna to know what time period that was. What was the year in which Catherine the Great was actually in power? And how did that time period actually create obstacles for her? They're definitely not going to be the same situations we're gonna have contemporary wise. So definitely consider your year and consider time period. Two, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to consider is physical setting. So the physical setting that you're gonna set this actual story in is really important. If you're going to have this setting in somewhere off in a whole other land, that's going to be totally different than if you had it somewhat locally to where you live. So consider setting as something that's going to set up a platform for the world. And the world is very, very important. I mean, most of the story is setting up the world that they live in. And if you're doing something such as a comedy or absurdism, or you're doing something that's sci-fi, you're gonna wanna consider the setting. Are you gonna have to create a whole different race and a whole other planet? What about language? All of this is affected by setting. So if you can see now how important setting is, you're gonna wanna research this, especially based in reality, because you wanna make sure it fits what the story is about. So if you're doing something that might be a crime drama, you're gonna wanna set it in a specific time period. That means that your setting is gonna be pretty important because heists and crimes can only happen in specific settings where you've got really good setup for conflict. So if you're gonna set it in a small Midwest town, that's gonna be totally different than how you're gonna set it up in a large city in a very well-known state or country. Really thoroughly research your setting, especially if you don't live in that state or country. You don't want someone who's actually from that location to go through your writing and actually say, I really love that story, except it wasn't believable because the setting didn't even feel real. It didn't even seem like the person knew what goes on in that town. So be very, very careful when you're placing someone in an unknown setting and make sure you do your research. Remember, especially if you're a screenwriter and you're in a very visual medium, you are going to be writing the blueprints to what this place looks like and how it feels and how it interacts with the character. 
You get the best story when you have a setting that actually interacts really well with a character in the story because it can prevent other things from happening internally or even externally for the character, and that's a plus. Now remember that in visual fields, you're setting up a lot of the world through setting. We don't have much time to say things, so you have to show things. And that's really a big part of showing versus telling. You don't want the character to tell you about this place, you want to feel it and see it in the surrounding of the character. And believe me, when you're picking genre, that can really affect a setting. If you're going to pick a horror story, you're probably not going to pick it in a specific location that might be more well suited to a crime drama. There will be no ghosts during a bank heist. Unless of course you're really into genre bending, then go ahead. Let your ghosts spoil a whole robbery. Three. Let's move on to political landscape. Or in other words, world rules. If you're creating a fantasy world, this is going to be a huge deal breaker for a lot of people. Once you set up the world and that political landscape, whether it's a king elf who rules the land and is fighting different people for control over the whole planet. Yes, I don't write fantasy. Sorry if that sounds really insane. <laughs> I don't even know what to say for myself. But when you're creating these worlds, you really want to make sure it's somewhat following rules that were either already set in place for you or following a rule that you're going to have to refer back to. So if you've got a hierarchy that's sort of in your way of doing things in your realm, you're going to want to include that and you're going to want to make sure you actually research this. For other sorts of films that are going to be set in maybe contemporary times, you want to make sure you research any of the laws that you're going to be including in your actual film. I'd say something like James Bond might be a sort of good reference for that. You're creating this place that is MI6, which does exist. You're basically creating this top secret agency and you want it to function in a contemporary world the way that it would. Of course, there's going to be some leeway. James Bond has to get away with doing certain things that most normal agents probably wouldn't be able to do. But that's for the entertainment portion. And if you're gonna break those rules, they have to be something that's a part of your world. Something that is explained later by another character or by an interaction as something that is normal in this world. You're setting up the fact that this may not be the actual world that we live in right now, presently, but in James Bond's world, this is what it is and this is what it's like and that's why you can enjoy it. Really hassle-free without having to think about the logistics of it because the logistics are up to you, the writer. Now I know it sounds silly, political landscape, but again, like I said, there are gonna be some rules that you're gonna be following, and for the most part, a lot of writers like to base this off of political structures that already exist. And that's something that you can sort of bend and play with and make it your own if you're creating something completely brand new for your world. But if you're creating something that's based in reality, just make sure to research it pretty heavily Again, to reference the great, you would most likely want to follow some of the structure that we would have had back in the 16th or 17th century whenever she was ruling. That way you make sure you're actually following along with a historical pathway for the hierarchy that was already set forth. This is pretty much based off of a actual person, so you want to make sure you're sort of following some of those rules, even though they do say they take some leeway with actually writing the story of this historical figure, they do tend to stick to the normalities of the time. Women not being something that was taken seriously and men being the preferred rulers. So you can see how they use that to their advantage and they've created such brilliant obstacles within that show. I definitely highly recommend you watch it. Four. Finally, subgenre. Now, a lot of times we don't even know that we're calling things in a subgenre, like supernatural horror or crime drama or slapstick comedy. We're combining a subgenre with a genre. Now, usually when we're creating a story, we already know that we're gonna have one standard genre already thought of in our mind for this particular piece, something that we've already sort of based it off of, whether it's drama, or romance, or comedy, we already know the base of what we're going to write. 
but the next step is to research subgenre. Now the reason you should be researching both genre and subgenre is because they're both going to come with their set of rules. Always find two comparable movies that are very similar to the story or two comparable books that are similar to the story that you're writing so that you can read them or watch them and get a feel for some of the rules that they're using. It's really funny because a lot of times we think we know what the rules are going to be but we actually don't. I thought I knew horror like the back of my hand and it turns out after I took my horror writing class I didn't know a whole lot about metaphors behind why they use certain monsters and why they have certain themes that are weaved into the story, which is why I recommend you also master genres before you go into them, or at least do your core research. Find out what are some of the typical things that you would see in the movie, how can you twist that on its head, and how can you incorporate certain other elements into your story to make it spooky, scary, or more on the drama side of things, or even more into the crime space. And using genre to propel your story forward with really great context and really great situations and obstacles. So again, it's a really great strategy to present a whole lot of different types of conflict into your character's lives internally and externally. And just remember that if you aren't sure if your sort of story falls into that genre, do more research because you don't want to be calling your film a horror film and it has no horror elements, no one is dying, there is nothing scary about it, and it is something that's more of a dramatic piece. You don't want to go into a territory where you're calling it something that it's not. When you do that, you risk people in the industry thinking you don't know what genre is or how to use it effectively, and you don't want people to think that you don't understand your genre. You want to make sure people know you're the master of your genre, whatever genre that might be and however many that might be. So those are my four tips for researching genre and making sure you are mastering it. I want to thank you for joining me for Right Miss Day 5, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a like, give me a subscribe if you find this content to be useful for you, and I will see you on the next one, scribes. It's because you're now combining two types of things that will have two separate sub... <sighs>